The batteries we will be commissioning today are eight of the Northstar 190 amp hour front terminal Blue Plus batteries installed in an Outback Power integrated battery rack, two shelf version. Warning, batteries are considered a high energy storage device that carry a higher risk of short circuiting. Before handling batteries, ensure you remove any wearable metals, utilize insulated tools and wear protective gear. Before making any serious connections, the voltage variation must be checked and recorded. With a voltmeter, measure each open circuit voltage individually across each string and record. Note, the NSP manual provides a table meant to record voltage readings. Due to temperature, storage time, and other factors, batteries may have a known voltage variation between each 12 volt monoblock. Considering previously recorded open circuit voltage, a voltage of 13.0 volts DC is a full battery, whereas a reading of 12.2 volts DC represents a 50% state of charge. If batteries have a variation of 0.15 volts DC between the highest and lowest battery voltage, or present a voltage of less than 13 volts DC, it is recommended to perform a refreshing charge of the entire bank to bring them up to balance and full charge. Once the battery voltages have been made and recorded, you may continue to make the series connections between batteries using the supplied interconnecting flexible links when operating 24 or 48 volt configurations. Tighten the terminals to a torque value of 71 inch pounds. Do not over torque as damage to terminals may occur. Note, Batteries should have a minimum clearance between each battery of a quarter inch for proper airflow. Ensure proper battery cable sizes are connected from each parallel string and home run to inverter. Please refer to the inverter installation manual for recommended conductor battery sizing. With a voltmeter, ensure you have proper string voltage. Close string disconnects and verify system level voltage at the common bus before powering up the inverter charger. Once verified, Power up the inverter charger and other devices. Connect the remote temperature sensor or RTS to the charging device and run the sensor to the battery bank and place towards the center of the bank in one of the battery's sidewalls. If the battery charger can modify its temperature compensation slope, adjust the factor to 2 mV per cell per degree Celsius. Ensure the battery charger is programmed correctly. Refer to the manual for recommended charger settings. If a FlexNet DC battery monitor is present, ensure the proper parameters are programmed. Refer to the manual for recommended settings. For system monitoring and data collection, connect to Optics RE or ensure Mate 3S data logging is enabled. To apply a manual refreshing charge, confirm charger voltage is set to a value of 2.35 volts per cell or 28.2 volts for a 24 volt system or 56.4 volts for a 48 volt system for a length of 16 hours. NSP Blue Plus batteries do not have a current acceptance restriction. However, it is recommended to supply them with a minimum of two times the 10 hour rate. In our case, we are using the 190 amp hour batteries that have a 10 hour capacity rating of 184.2 amp hours divided by 10 hours would equal to 18.4 amps DC times 2 would give us a recommended minimum charge current of 36.8 amps DC. During a refreshing charge, monitor the battery periodically and note the operation is proceeding normally. Terminate after a period of 16 hours. Note, during a charge and discharge cycle, measure each battery voltage individually and string current. Note and record any large discrepancies. If large discrepancies are noted, recheck all intercell, string, and home run connections. Additionally, it is recommended to perform and record a capacity test to validate initial nameplate capacity. Testing capacity will also help with future warranty claims. All right, you're all set. Thank you for watching and see you next time.